like like how 98% of our drive is literally just getting at our critics at this point. Yeah. If you don't like us, oh, yeah, we I'm going to come to your house and fuck your dad yeah. every time we should, I get. We should definitely change that. You're right. For that motherfucker who I'm going to fucking slit his throat. One day, I will go to your house and slit your throat while you're sleeping. Just fucking Daniel Day-Lewis the whole yeah. time. I drink your milkshake. <laughs> I will never not I drink it up. That is, that is I the drink it all up. craziest yeah. thing you could ever say to your child, whether they're eight or 38, is that 30, exactly. I drink your milkshake. Your milkshake. <laughs> I drink it up. God. That's good Lord. I love that movie, by the way. That's it's so yeah. good. It is, it's phenomenal. Daniel, and I always like tell people like, "What's your favorite movie?" And, like, it's 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 either "There Will Be Blood" with Daniel Day Lewis or "The Assassination of Jesse James." And I I always have people usually love interests like watch this movie. And they're like, "I don't get it. It's boring. It's ooh, it's not fucking boring. It's brilliant." Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I always say the Road to Perdition. Road That's to Perdition. Yeah, yeah. It's because I'm a Hank slut though. If he needed anything from me, oh, he'd have it. God, he'd have it. <laughs> well, he's a he's a brilliant actor. He's a brilliant actor. Yeah, he could come on the inside. You know what I mean? Mm. God, no harm in it. there's no harm in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we all know is that there's no consequences for having sex without protection. No, so that's truth. And that's the tr- that's the truth. It's we've yeah, all yeah. learned that individually. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Lesser Known People podcast. I am your host for the evening, Mr. KY Jelly. With me, I've got the beautiful and esteemed Sean, the Magic Carpet Ride. How you doing, baby? Hi there. Hi there. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good tonight. Just lovely. You're keeping that beard thick. It's got to be. Always. Oh, I mean, none of the rest of you keep a thick beard, so one of us have to be token for it. Speaking of thick beards, we've got Mr. Big Cat. The Ryan. Ryan the Lion. How's it going, mm. baby? How you doing? Mm. I'm doing great, baby. I'm going to keep on loving you. You got you know that it. smooth Irish skin. Alabaster. Oh, my God, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is. It is. Bar of soap. They call me Bar of Soap, baby. <laughs> call me Bar of Soap. And Big Cat has now become Bar of Soap. We also <laughs> have... <laughs> We've also got Mr. J Money, J Master... I'm I'm notoriously bad at these intros, man. So I'm just gonna say hi, back away. You're I'm just not gonna good at it. Back away. Yeah. No, I'm so bad at it. <laughs> it's too much pressure. Hi, MJ Money. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I have another strong female lead for us to cover tonight. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. buddy. So I'm gonna say up front that she's from Australia and. I am not going to do the accent. I do not do a good Australian accent. Oi, you can put Oi, what you talking about? Not doing the accent. Because it slips to English immediately. Appar- apparently, we'll cover for you. Yeah. 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 If you guys want to pick up my shit, my slack, I'd appreciate that. That's what oh, we yeah. do. You just, you know, you're, you're okay. Oh, what are we? We're, we're a dozen or so episodes in, and I'm already phoning it in. I'm over it. <laughs> He's over his own podcast. <laughs> I'm past it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> KY, I feel you, man. I like I've been to Australia and I cannot do an Australian accent. It's, yeah. There's always an inflection at the end. And I don't Where are you just... going? Is it to Sydney? You go to Sydney? You drive a car to Sydney? Or you drive I... on the opposite side of the road out here? Right? <laughs> no, that's very cocky. That's, that's actually very quite. Cocky. I'll go with that. That's yeah. uh, you know. it, it slides. I think as Americans, it just slides into English. We don't. Here's the thing: as Americans, fuck everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, we just we we carry the same accent constantly. We think everything is the same. Yeah, I love I the Australians, and uh, they're yeah. a, a wild bunch. Fucking tough as it gets. The accent, yeah. though. Be when, I, when I when I said fuck everyone, I just meant. Obviously, we can't fucking do your accents. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Australia, like, we can't do an Australian accent. Australia's great. And the, you're right, KY. The people are tough as nails. They're, like, great, like, real, real Americans, but not, right? Like, they're yeah. just, you know, fuck Vegemite. If you guys know what Vegemite is, that shit sucks Aww. dicks. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so, KY, what do we, what do we got from Australia? From this so, country, we can't do the accents from. What do we got? <laughs> and that's why I brought it yeah, up, never, mainly never, for the accents. Yeah. Yeah, never never choose this topic again. 
<laughs> Already again off to a bad start. Classic KY episode. <laughs> yeah, we need we need we need Midwest, Northeast. That's it. That's what we got. Anywho, so we are going to be covering this strong young lady, Kathy Wayne. With the last name Wayne, she's already American badass. So she was actually born Kathy Warns? War- Warns? Warns. I, th- I think it's Warns, but she goes by Kathy Wayne. It's her stage name. We'll get into that. So I'm going to refer to her for anyone who knows who it is. She is going to be referred to as Kathy Wayne the entire time. So uh, Miss Kathy Wayne was born December 7th, 1949, which incidentally enough is the eight-year anniversary of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Oh, damn. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And so she was born in, I'm sure if anybody from Australia hears this, I might butcher this. She was born in Arncliffe, Australia, which is a suburb of Sydney. So she's born in the greater Sydney area. So it's in the big okay. city. And she was a born performer. So she started doing recitals and singing and, and stage stuff when she was like 12, right? And like local competition, school stuff, all that jazz, right? So as a kid, she earned a spot on the Opportunity Knox TV show for dancing. So she was doing a bunch of dancing stuff. And this is the 1950s version of American Idol, basically. Oh, yeah. Yeah. American Bandstand in Australia. Yeah, yeah, basically. It was. Actually, really funny you should mention that. So she's, <laughs> she's on the British version of American Idol. Actually, so it's the Australian version, but it was also co-opted, the British version. It's a colony, you know, and I'm sure the Australians yeah, oh, yeah. hate that, but just, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Opportunity Knox was, oddly enough, it was the first show to use call-in voting, although they still relied heavily on the very accurate age-old clap meter so, oh yeah well yeah. clapometer is an absolute science i think that's what people forget yeah, yeah we actually use that on our show to to gauge how well people like it and we got one clap Good. yeah one clap there we go it's like erlenmeyer flask clapometer it's right mm-hmm. there yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah, it's yeah. On the base level really <laughs> yeah. so she went on to win some regional talent contests and she was offered a regular role on bandstand as justin mm-hmm. mentioned Oh damn! Awesome. Yeah, I'm the prophet now. He's Clap a fucking him. seer. He's a he's a soothsayer. He knows these things. The show Bandstand is based on the American Bandstand version, which this is just a random fact I came across. So Dick Clark is from this is gonna for anybody older than we are, which is we're in our thirties. I didn't realize that Dick Clark was like the Bandstand guy. That's how he fucking got his. That's how he made a start. I had no clue. I was. I just. I was born, and yeah. Dick Clark already existed as a personality, and that's. I thought that was gospel. Although it was like a weird transition they had. They were. They hosted a usually a national radio show, and then they did kind of one of these syndicated shows once a week or so. Yeah. So he was on uh, American Bandstand for like thirty years. He hosted it. Damn. He didn't host it the first year, and then he hosted it until it stopped in like the fucking eighties. It was yeah. insane. He was just on that bitch running it. I didn't uh, know American Bandstand lasted that long. Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy long, crazy long. It was, it was like, on for a really long time. Yeah. 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 We should bring it back. Our idea, heard it first here, Lesson to People podcast, bringing back American Bandstand. Suck it. Yeah. Well, American Bandstand has been brought back in like every other gross version because it's just a variety talent show. And now there's like 16 fucking variety talent shows for everyone. America's got uh, talent. That's that's not true. I just made that up right now. Yeah. <laughs> Check your facts. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Kelly Clarkson. So <laughs> She's like up. on the internet and stuff and we're pros, okay, she, at the internet. She, it is like super on the internet. You're right. Yeah. Also, okay. she got yeah, thick. Okay. Definitely. Dude, Kelly Clarkson got thick, and I'm way into chicks who can sing that are thick. Like Same. Adele is in my book. All that stuff. I'm. Dude. I like her better. A little bit of me. Kelly, okay. Kelly Clarkson, Adele. Kelly Clarkson, Adele. Those thick singing chicks. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, I'm. I, I'm actually I, really I, down for Lizzo. Are you really? Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I get that. I'm on that. I was more for, uh, is it Jennifer Hudson, when she was thicker. I liked yeah, her better okay. when she was thicker. She lost a lot. She, yeah. You know, and yeah. she looks yeah. great now, too. She looks great. She looks great right now. She she's, I'm sure she's much healthier than she was before, but I was like, ooh, honey, 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 speak to me now. Hey. <laughs> and we'll just, we'll just say this. All these women look great regardless. Anywho. Oh, yeah. Our friend Kathy was on American, or excuse me, she was on Bandstand, which is actually a better name than American Bandstand, because it's just Bandstand, so I don't know why we missed out on that one. So she was on that, and while performing on Bandstand, she met 
Cole Joy. I actually think that they probably call him Call. So his name is Colin, but he goes by C O L. So Call? Colin? Call? Yeah, Cole? I go with Call. Right, yeah. Cole, probably. A bit C O L. So I'm like, he's a colonel? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. And he was basically <laughs> he was basically a kangaroo fighting Buddy Holly with no glasses. Like the legit, like you just Google this guy in the fifties and sixties, and that's exactly who he was. So Kathy signed up with Joy's talent agency uh, shortly after joining up with Bandstand and all that stuff. So she's uh, she's a very young lady at this time. She might be like fifteen or sixteen when she actually signs up with him, and she's doing singing and dancing and variety shows and this kind of jazz. Um, so Kathy toured with him across Australia and began making a name for herself. So she was basically, you know, he was headlining and she was running support and, and basically being a cute young lady. Oh, Joy, uh, you should join me to her. And then you come out here, I fought a kangaroo, and then you <laughs> sing some songs and it'll be all right. I'm called Joy. I'm called Joy. That was a little closer. That was, was a little closer. It was, yeah, it's, it's getting warmer. It's yeah. definitely warmer. It's closer. warming up. You, you know, I was maybe. on mute earlier. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was on mute earlier, and you didn't take it. So, yeah, now this is what you get, bro. Yeah, no, you were on mute earlier. We saw you practicing the accent while you were on mute. Yeah, while well, I was on mute. <laughs> call, 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 Try inappropriate, out. inappropriate, plug. <laughs> inappropriate. Plug. Uh, classic Ryan move. Uh, I'm trying to get the money. Deal with it, KY. Yeah. Accept the sponsorship. God damn it. Uh, so during this time, after she signed up with Joy and Crew, she did cut some pretty early records that didn't really do much. The suspicion across Australia is that all the sales came from koalas, uh, who. S- <laughs> I wrote this terrible. I wrote a I'm terrible sorry. joke, and I'm trying to fucking I'm force it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's, I was going to say, say what? I, you, are you? I was trying to go in serious. God damn it, I fucked it up. Eucalyptus, eucalyptus leaf? I was, oh, so here's the joke. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm going to cut all this. This is fucking terrible. I was going to say, the, the rumor leave across. It. You fucking leave it. <laughs> your best joke. This is your best joke tonight. Say, oh say, my God. All right, so here's a full joke. Here's a full joke. It's like, the suspicion across Australia is that on. The, the records Mostly so the koalas who thought they were, who mistakenly accepted that they were eucalyptus leaves. I, I wrote it and I was like, God, this is a terrible fucking joke. <laughs> this is a terrible joke. It was a bad joke before Sorry, you, you pitched get it. You that the first time. I just laughed that it was mostly koalas. It was mostly the koalas. Time. <laughs> terrible, terrible joke. So no, I, I, I apologize to our Australian listeners. You didn't, even, uh, I, you didn't even I, present I, it as if it were a joke. It looked like you were reading it off your screen. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that was real the first time, and then I realized it was a joke, and I, I wrote like it. A and I was real like, news, like it was a news report, like news report. My fucking life <laughs> laughing at this thing. I yeah, thought I was like, pay I for. If I do it flat enough, it'll fly. And I was like, I can't even fucking read this. No, shit. that was. <laughs> I got. Oh, be- what's this koala doing crawling on the ground, crying over here with his eucalyptus leaves? Oh no! no. Yeah, it's, it's your worse. your joke is as bad as Ryan's accents. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so she did cut a couple records, and they didn't do that well. She's also like sixteen at this time, so it's like okay, she She's made fucking child. what is that yeah. stupid song? I kept think, I kept uh, thinking Friday. she was like Friday. Friday. Thank you. Yes, Friday. I knew exactly what you're talking about. Black. <laughs> Rebecca Black. I knew exactly what you're talking about. Oh yeah, Rebecca Black. She's out Friday. here. Friday. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly right. We're fun. Right. Fun. 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 Rebecca Black, if you're listening, we we invite you onto the podcast. Join yeah. us. Yeah. Fun. That's right. We go. do. You're still wel- always welcome. Always welcome. Always we will welcome. not make fun of you. I am legitimately curious about a lot of things. Yeah. We saw the incident Fantano. Still so many questions after that interview. Come on on. Come on. Yep. I will have to watch it about five minutes before you come on. But I'll watch it. I will watch it. I mean, she, to, to, to her credit, as, as an aspiring young artist, as we are aspiring podcasters, people love us. We're famous. Uh, so she has a lot to learn from us. I mean, she did do that interview, and she was like, um, I hate that fucking song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, kind yeah. of forced into it. Yeah. No, totally. She was a fucking child. It was unfair to her to be put in that position, I guess. I totally get that. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely – well, it's a little like, you know, you have these super young people who 
who are talented, or at least maybe in Rebecca's case, very motivated, no offense to Rebecca at all, who kind of push themselves and have people around that push them into the music industry, and then maybe not so great stuff comes of it. I think this is kind of the turning point for Kathy Wayne. In 1967, Wayne, who was kind of with uh, Cole Joy's talent agency and all that other stuff, she joined Cole Joy on the first Vietnam tour to entertain the troops, and she was 17 at the time. Oh, my God. We're going to go entertain the troops, girl. Let's go, right? You gotta, you, it's Up and that. unders, we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Up and unders is a nice bar in Kalamazoo, in Kalamazoo. Michigan. <laughs> yeah, we'll go entertain the Viet Cong. Yeah, this will be great. <laughs> they really want to hear a bunch of Australians shouting with bad hair. That's what they want to see. Oh, Lord. So, yeah, so she was 17 at the time of this first tour. And, um, you know, they, they went. They did the whole thing. It was this big experience, and she comes back. And I do have a, a note about like these entertainment tours. And Justin, we all know, is a, is is a is a man with a lot of military experience. But from what I could read about the Vietnam tours for the entertainment groups, I know nothing, and I truly do not pretend to know anything about the service. But um, so the groups, especially like Rising or, or a lot of like lesser known people, like not your Bob Hopes, not your your well known names. They were like really fucking thrown in the bush to get to what what are they forward operating base FOBs or whatever FOPs. Yeah. Um, they were FOPs, thank you. So yeah, so they were they were thrown way out there, and you know some some entertainers, American, uh, not American, you know Australians, English people, they were killed unfortunately, and you know Kathy Wayne was sort of thrust into that. Can you imagine at seventeen being thrown into a jungle warfare? It's true. They did. They did. Um, you know, USO at the time, they, the protocol was pretty out there for what they could do. So they were sending, like you said, a 17 year old kind of pop singer out to guys who were way out in the front lines of whatever was going on. So when I was in Iraq, I was in the infantry and we, I, I was way, way the fuck out, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And the, the grunts, of course, we have it kind of the worst. We're out there kind of on the on the front. There really was no front in Iraq. It's not the same as, as Vietnam or World War II or Korea for that matter. But we were just way out there. And like we would always get these like, oh, yeah, they're doing a, a USO show back at al Qaim or back at, at a TQ or Al-Assad. These are the big kind of big fobs. And for us living in some little like blocking position in the middle of nowhere, it was like, well, fuck, man. Like, I want to meet Toby Keith. But, of course, they like they would never, ever bring anyone out to where the fuck we were at. So it was kind of shitty. Like, when I – USO tours, as good as they are, and I think that they are really good. Like, for me as a grunt, always kind of, like, left a bad taste in my mouth because, you know, the guys who were fighting and dying were not getting the opportunity to, like – meet the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. It's always like the air wingers, the admin guys, like the guys who have like, and I don't know if Vietnam had this, they probably didn't, but you know, the fobs in Iraq were like, they were like McDonald's. They were like <laughs> coffee shops, like oh, wow. internet. What? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's it's like, and we're all like the air wingers, all the admin guys, all the logistics fucks. They got all that cool stuff and the grunts were out there. was like, I can... I get a satellite phone call for 10 minutes once a month, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So the, the USO shows, and, and they may have learned their lesson from Vietnam, like getting celebrities or semi-celebrities killed out in the jungle. There's like, yeah, we're not going to send you guys out to the yeah. grunts. You're just going to do I, your entertainment thing so that Donald Rumsfeld can say that we're doing the best we can and fucking go on with it. You're yeah. you're a hundred percent right. They learned that you can't just send celebrities out to wherever they had to send them to specific locations. So unfortunately, our dearly beloved Justin, who was out actually fighting in the Iraq war, doing real things, putting his life on the line, as opposed to the guy who was maybe a typist, maybe right. maybe the, the working biggest, on helicopters, maybe, you know, different. The biggest butthurt situation I was in, and thank you, Ryan, I appreciate that. The biggest butthurt situation I was in is uh, Chuck Norris came out to, to USO show. And Chuck Norris came out, and I thought, if there's one motherfucker that's going to come out and brave the wilds of, uh, 
of the Iraqi wilderness, it's definitely going to be Chuck Norris. I would like to see Chuck Norris fucking Texas Ranger roundhouse kick some fucking Iraqi insurgent through a fucking window, but it never happened. I was so butthurt about that. Oh, my God. Not his fault. This Not is Chuck Norris's fault. No, 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 no. By any means. No one, no one is blaming. Yeah, no, but it's, uh, it is, to Justin's point, to all of our listeners, it is, uh, it is a screwy system. You have to be one of those folks who is stationed right at the fucking base doing something. Otherwise, you are not seeing it. To the Chuck Norris point, can I add in a small point here? He showed up to my middle school in El Paso with Tom DeLay, disgraced politician Tom DeLay, to give a speech at Moorhead Middle School in our gym. And he did. He and Tom DeLay both. <laughs> did he roundhouse kick the microphone or the Dude, principal or was something? Ta- no, let me, tell you, let me tell you this much. Let me tell you this much. And quite frankly, I, Justin, I don't know how to say this. He probably gave a relatively same speech to the folks he was seeing in Iraq <laughs> who were serving. Okay? It was basically don't do drugs, stay in school, and – achieve your dreams those were the three that he was talking about stay disciplined and i was like okay that's cool man these are cool i I gotta tell you the motivational speeches that you would give to a middle school is the same motivational speech that you should give to any marine (laughs) should should italicize should (laughs) don't Don't do drugs marine i'm gonna do it (laughs) we all still did it (laughs) i do like when it when it and only based on my research i want to make that clear that i'm not speaking as an expert in any of this shit but it seems that the experience of a lot of these, a lot of the Vietnam guys when it came to these entertainment tours from, and now we're speaking of the Australian bunch, but the, the American ones as well, is that the bigger names hung back. They came to the bigger bases where they could probably ensure security a little bit better. You know, Bob Hope wasn't going no, and doing Bob, something in a fucking the, airfield in the yeah. middle of nowhere. You know, he wasn't. Yeah. Bob Hope no, is. Bob, in- Bob Hope was like running and gunning in the Tet Offensive for Yeah. Years. Sure. Yeah. yeah screaming fucking watch a tree line like he wasn't yeah. doing that like <laughs> he was so a lot of the a lot of the young women and i don't want to make a political thing of this at all but especially in the 60s and 70s a lot of young women of color were asked to go to the most far reaches yeah yeah because they were you know they were american australian or british and they were probably perceived truthfully as a little more expendable. Now that's me. That's my lens. That's no, no, thing. that's, that is legitimately how, how it worked. If you think about, let's, uh, God, I don't want to dive down this hole too much. I, we need to get back to the story, but Vietnam, we're still talking about, look at uh, race relations in the U S we still had segregation within yeah. certain yeah. portions of the United States. So there's no question being a woman as particularly a woman of color, you are, you are different. Right. Yeah. And, and, and there's no, there's no secret that the, you know, the 99.9% of people serving in Vietnam were men between the ages of 18 and 24. And so, you know, they wanted to see what was a slice of normality, what was a slice of home and what was a slice of a nice, beautiful young lady. And not even in the grossest way possible. You know, they wanted a little bit of a reminder of like, you know what, this is what's going on back home. It is like, you know, it is entertainment. It is Hollywood. It is these beautiful young people doing fun stuff. You know, it's not as awful as it is here. And I'm sure Justin knows that better than anyone else. So all that stuff aside, so the um, I watched this documentary by, I want to give a reference here, just in case anyone's curious. Um, it is called Entertaining Vietnam. It's a 2003 documentary by Mara Wallace, who was an Australian performer, singer, who was actually in Vietnam and did all this shit. So she did a documentary with basically a bunch of people she toured with to give their experiences. But that being said, they got a tremendous amount of pressure from their management companies to go to Vietnam and do the tours because it raised their profiles. And oh, yeah. So yeah. If, you were, if you were a young woman in an up-and-coming band and you're trying to make a name for yourself in the U.S., Australia, and the U.K., you went and fucking did the Nam tour because you came back and were like, listen, you know, I'm a true patriot. I support these people. I support what's going on. And you would raise your, you would raise your profile. And so- very true. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I don't think nothing I've read says anything that this call joy guy and his, his entertainment group was, was malicious or they weren't gross or there's nothing really salacious, which I was kind of disappointed in because I would have made the podcast better, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they were basically like, listen, go to fucking Vietnam. And, and she was at 17 was like, dope. You know, she didn't put up a big fuss. She was excited to go. I, I don't want to cast that on her at all. So 
she went and she, when she came back after this first tour, she raised her profile and she sold more records and she had a bigger name and she was touring around Australia for a couple of years. And like I said, there's, there's a lot to unpack that. There was also a bit of, I'm going to use the term graft going on when it comes to some of the, let's just say a tour manager who would actually be on boots on the ground where they would take calls from different FOBs or different bases or airfields or kind of whatever it was in Vietnam. And people would call, or these, I would say higher ranking officials would call very generic term and say, who do you got? And if they said a young woman, if they said a young white woman, they were like, come here. And they would give, they would literally bribe the tour managers to send them there because they had young white performers. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was a very, you know, all even performance talent aside, there was this whole other kind of dark industry that there isn't a lot of details on, but you know, yeah, there was some pretty serious reports of that, and the performance actually didn't get a lot of money, unsurprisingly. Uh, just ask Metallica, am I right, guys? Yeah, they got <laughs> fucked. Definitely, definitely. absolutely. So, give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me Vietnam in the fucking sixties. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so there's kind of all that stuff going on in the background, but you can imagine that like a young Australian chick at 17, who who is just she's a lead up. She did go with this call joy guy. He went to Vietnam. And did the whole thing, and she was just a fucking warm up act, and she was just sold for for what she was. But so she came back to Australia, and um, she continued to build her name. Uh, she was solo at first, doing her whole thing, and then in like '69, so that was she, she went over in '67. I want to make sure, yeah. So she went over in '67 the first time, and so she spent a couple of years kind of building her name, selling records, and all that stuff. And in '69, she joined up with the pop group Sweethearts on Parade, which sounds like you're selling a person. (laughs) (laughs) Sweethearts on Parade is, uh, I have, I have purchased one of those individuals many a times. I'm pretty sure I've seen a documentary on our sponsor, Pornhub. uh, Definitely on our sponsor. uh, Yeah. Pornhub. Um, but also just illegally. A lot of, uh, <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, just getting these folks. I was going to say, when this whole bit started, if we didn't bring up fucking Pornhub, we'd be wrong. But yeah. Ryan, you took it to a brand mm. beautiful I level. I took it to a, a yeah. We yeah. got there. We got there. For everyone, uh, human sex trafficking is not funny. But uh, I did make a joke about it. So <laughs> I, did, I did make a direct joke at that, at that expense. <laughs> <laughs> It's the name of the group, not the people in it, whatever. Um, yeah, it's not the people, it's not the people that I pay. It's not the people I pay. It's the people. That I pay. So, um, <laughs> I don't. No, again, that still no sounds like that still sounds like sex trafficking. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to. Okay, that's the joke, Kyle. Oh my god, dude. It just. Oh my it's, god. It's sex, sex trafficking with more steps. That's, that's exactly right. That's exactly honestly, right. if you heard my koala joke, you understand that I get comedy. You know. What okay. I mean? well, Please, that's, that's everyone, make crap. sure you at like, least oh, listen God. to the koala joke. If you skip to this point, go back and find the koala joke because it was hilarious. Yeah, it was I the best joke ever. The whole fucking joke, and it was hilarious. <laughs> so don't come here for the sex trafficking. Come here for yeah. the koala jokes. Don't come here for the sex trafficking. <laughs> come here for the koala jokes. That's exactly right. God. Okay, I did do anti-sex trafficking overseas. Uh, I remember just a serious that. business. You were this was uh, this was part of your stint in Thailand, right? Yeah, I did that in Thailand. I I did a little bit in the Philippines. Um, really, really fucking evil shit, man. Like you could uh, that, and that was that was my first go. My my first, you know, after after Iraq, and I went. I went to go do the other thing that I did. We're not I probably. Not, I don't feel too comfortable talking about exactly everything I did, but we did uh, the human trafficking thing. And um, fuck, man, never again. I would never again. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I I will I will say uh, this story doesn't get too far down that rabbit hole, um, but we I think we can all generally agree fucking monsters are running that shit yeah. so yeah. don't do that don't participate in that this podcast yeah. in no way very seriously endorses this podcast takes a strong stance against human trafficking yeah we Let's traffic our ourselves fun. only that's yeah. what we do yeah. if, mm-hmm. if you're if you're lonely go to porn up porn up that's right. Yeah, that's right we don't do any human trafficking porn up porn up yeah. you can find any genre you like 
Pornhub. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. You can find all types of different anal you want on Pornhub, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> all yeah. right. We got when, real far. Yeah. Real far off track. When are we getting that fucking sponsorship? Holy shit. I just, I really want them to honestly reach out to us with some dollar amounts. Yeah. I refuse I, to I contact like them. It's KY, the story is so good, and I'm sorry we keep interrupting. No, 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 no. You guys are doing perfect. So we got, we got Sweethearts on Parade. So Sweethearts on Parade, which we're not going to make any more sex trafficking jokes about. Um, nope. So the group was formed specifically to go back to Vietnam and do a second tour. They, they were formed for entertainment trafficking. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's call it. That, that's probably, that's accurate about what it is. It's entertainment trafficking. Let's send um, them over, see what the boys like. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, but before she was, you know, definitely second tier. She was somebody's fucking warm up. So now she's 19. She's full of piss and vinegar, making a fucking name for herself. And so they basically kind of build this band around her. She's the lead. She does the dancing and the singing and all this other stuff. They've got like fucking seven people in this band, in this group. So there's like an organist. I don't know why there's an organist, but Hell yeah. there is. Uh, uh, don't, yeah, popular, don't, electric organ don't, was don't downplay yeah don't downplay the the badassery of the organ okay Six, when i played in my shitty little christian band we definitely had an organist and i hated that guy if you're listening cooper i fucking hate you <laughs> <laughs> okay. fuck you cooper <laughs> fuck to you be cooper. Fair, to be fair that christian band was totally dope okay okay and and justin's <laughs> phenomenal phenomenal yeah, but dish. cooper was a bitch and god hates you cooper so enjoy that yeah. and cooper was probably a bitch but at the same time you were probably a great musician okay all right i i, I vote for the the next shirt to be fuck you cooper i think that's a great idea yeah i yeah. dude damn i think there's at least there's at least fucking five other guys that i know that would buy that <laughs> <laughs> you nailed that joke <laughs> that's a, that's, a, that's that's a good joke you have got to if we make that shirt you gotta be like you guys have to buy this we have to do at least five this is for you basically yeah no, I'd, I'd buy it for them and give it to them and they'd still wear it <laughs> no but the the uh you know what the electric organ uh 60s music it was it was popular you look at the doors they had an electric organ essentially for a lot of their music yeah um, absolutely so i know that not, I, I already common. had that information so i knew that <laughs> <laughs> you know what i am sorry because i interrupted you you were going to bring it up you were gonna bring it up. I knew yeah, it. and that's exactly right. If you just if you just let me do my job, I need to. Be... I need to. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, anyway, so she's sweetheart's on parade. This whole thing's designed around her, and they basically they know that if they go to Nam, they're gonna book a bunch of gigs. She's a cute young white chick. Boom, they're gonna get nothing, fucking. Nothing tons of sounds shit. good about. I'm gonna go to Nam. I know there's a ton of gigs there. That sounds fucking. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? There's a ton of gigs in Nam. Let's just go. Let's just burn Let's it just out. Fucking go, man. It's gonna be yeah. hot. Yeah, a lot of money yeah. to be made. You know, there's so much money in Vietnam, which is we're going to be blazing weird. in Vietnam with all these all these fucking Joes walking around out here. They yeah. are, okay, so speaking of blazing, though, on that documentary, they interviewed this one woman, and I believe she was Australian, and she was like, she's like, oh, I wanted to go to Nam. She's like, I wanted to do my part. I felt like you know these young men, the the experience that young Australian men who were fighting in Vietnam is very similar to what was happening in the U.S. Where the troops themselves weren't supported and blah, 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 right? I don't, I don't want to say blah, blah, blah to minimize it, but everyone kind of knows that. That being said, she was like, you know, I had a cousin. She knew somebody and she's like, I want to go do my bit, right? And she goes, I loved going over there, smoking weed, hanging out with guys and shooting the fucking guns. And I was like, dude, this oh, chick is too this real. fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah, baby. Oh, man. I was like, dude, she's the fucking truth out here. That's amazing. <laughs> God, that's <brutal. laughs> Yeah. So uh, I think there was a good time to be had. It's not just entertainment trafficking, but whatever. So so they do the group, and our young Kathy starts dating Clive Kavanaugh, who is the drummer of the band. Drummers get the most, man. Yeah, baby. Yeah. They do, they do get yeah. the most. Yeah. Sean, as a resident drummer, you know this is true? You know this is true? I do. Yeah. I, I bang drums and, well, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> One could surmise. <laughs> and women, whoa, whoa. It's mostly been consensual. Uh, so It's okay. <laughs> it's always been consensual, Sean. It's always, it's A lot always of people want to touch his body. It's a magic carpet ride. It's a magic carpet ride. And he's a great light. He's a great light. Yeah. Thank you. Very serviceable. Is that, I think that's the most Service. often... Yeah, most often that's what I hear from these women because I do a lot of like post 
A lot of customer surveys <laughs> afterwards. It's a lot of post surveys yeah. of, of sex. Like, so your time with Sean, how was your experience? It, one out of 10, 10 being the best, one being the worst. How was your experience? <laughs> At least a seven almost every time. Yeah, he's averaging high eights, which is really good. Yeah. Very good stuff. That's, that's, I'm okay with Get that. into the comments yeah. that yeah. things get different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a walking Sean Yelp, and he's at like four stars, which is mm. really solid. Mm. I'm okay with that. Honestly, yeah. for my numbers, four, four stars. Really honestly, good. when I saw it, it was like a 4.8. It was. We, right. we had a couple of detractors, and honestly, it was it was not us. You know, it, it was wasn't not, the organization. It was yeah. it was just, I think it was an external like, factor or two. You know? I do, it was. I do think it was an external factor. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, there was an issue. They expected breakfast or something. So. Yeah, I had I had one woman. She was doing nothing but complaining about the I hop and go feature of our service. Yeah. And so, yeah. that's not because see, she wanted to sleep with me, so yeah. she's not you know just like me, not down with I hop and go. Yeah. Dude, I just want to I want to use this time right now to tell you to tell the world, if you sleep with a man, I hop is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. Okay. It's not it's part not, of it. And true. if you get it, it's not always when you want it. It's not always when you want it. Yeah. There's a chance his asshole roommates are going to come wake you up at 7 a.m. It's when, I don't it's know. When I feel like getting it or someone else. <laughs> <laughs> really just, just mention the words and we'll probably go. We'll probably, probably figure go. something out, but you need to get your shit together. I hop yeah. when you're done with Pornhub for the day. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Pornhub after. <laughs> go back to Pornhub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're not when you're not on Pornhub, how about some pancakes? Yeah. <laughs> so the so the group, the sweethearts on parade. God, I have like two lines of a paragraph, and we haven't even gone through it. So the group actually had a full time go go dancer, which sounds sexy, wow. but when I watched a couple of Kathy Wayne's music videos, music videos back in the day, oh, yeah. they had. Go go dancers in the background. It's a lot of straight arm dancing. It's a lot of straight arms. <laughs> it's it, it, they're always out. Elbows locked the whole time. And I'm like Elbows locked? Man, yeah. Just like they're just yeah. whatever the move is, it's locked. They're locked the whole I time. Don't, I don't want that. Who did give, no give me some drunk white girl dancing any Definitely. day of the week. I yeah. wanna see I wanna see I, I know you have daddy issues based on how tight those elbows are. Oh fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, and if they're straight out, I'm straight out. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second best joke, hey, KYZ. <laughs> the koala joke reigns supreme. Oh my god, <laughs> the koala joke is is mastery. So in June of 1969, Kathy Wayne and the rest of the sweethearts arrived for an unsanctioned tour in Vietnam. So the the Australian like enter you know military entertainment something or other they they sanction quote unquote these tours an unsanctioned tour just means that basically your entertainment media group fucking set it up and the military yeah. on the other side was like yeah cool you guys come over and they do like basic security try to set up some sort of schedule for you whatever but yeah. it was unsanctioned I don't know if that actually matters but it kept coming up and shit so here we are uh, just as a weird note, the group stayed in Saigon between shows and little mini tours during that period. But um, wow, yeah. okay, so this, okay, interesting. Yeah, pretty big digs. There was there was a couple notes from the people in that documentary um, that basically said that when they as, as as entertainment groups, they weren't staying, they weren't allowed to stay at bases, even big bases, for the extended tours because some people were over there for like two or three years. Oh, doing do you mean doing the USO tours? Yeah, doing yeah. doing these entertainment yeah. tours. Um, again, yeah. US, yeah. UK, and Australia. They were yeah. you most, would go over and you'd do like a basically like a Las Vegas residency. Some some folks would. Yeah, right. they, they they really would. One woman said that she went and stayed for the better part of three years, which was oh. that was the longest one that I that I heard of. But yeah, it, people were over there for a year at a time, something like that, which is freaking. It's bananas to me. I never would have thought. Yeah. I thought it would be like, you know, a few months maybe, and then they'd be gone. But so they could be, some of these people set up, say, in Saigon for, they had like apartments they were basically living at. And yeah. And they were, they, they were intermixing with all of, you know, the, the sights and sounds of Saigon or whatever else, wherever else they were. Yeah. They had um, this, this guy, I don't remember his name. He said that, you know, they were there. They made it clear over the months that they were there that, um, to the to the locals, to the people who worked at the hotel and they bought their groceries from, they were like, Yeah, we're we're entertainers, we're from America, UK, Australia, wherever. And nobody ever gave them grief, nobody ever harmed them on the street, robbed them, any of that stuff. 
and they all gave pretty good credence to those folks, kind of the, the gen pop. One guy said that his kind of their 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 bus boy, their hotel bus boy, come clean up if they did whatever at their hotel. Um, towards the end of the stay, he was like, "Well, you know, I'm Viet Cong, right?" And they were like, "Whoa, what?" Yeah. And he was Excuse like, me? "He's like, yeah, I was. He's like, I was off last week because I was over fighting in in this village or whatever, and I I I could have killed people, or I was in the tunnels, or I w- I was helping them dig tunnels or something, or I was setting traps." And they were like, you know, truthfully, that that kid could have come into the room with a gun and, and killed all of us. Like we didn't have yeah. guns. We were entered, you know, we had a freaking guitar and a an electric uh, organ or something, you know. And but they yeah. never there was never really a report of them getting, say, ambushed at their hotels and stuff. And so full credence to anybody from Vietnam who might be listening to this, they said that the the people were really good to them throughout. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which to me is like, you know, if you think about maybe wars in the Middle East or whatever's going on now, it's that's a wild, it's a wild thought to entertain yeah. for for a civilian. Yeah. So anyway, so in uh, June of '69, when the crew go over for their own section tour, and on July 20th, 1969, so about a month after they arrive, the Sweethearts on Parade were performing at an NCO's club in Da Nang for around 75 Marines. Now, this kind of goes back to what Justin was saying before, is that this was not necessarily a quote-unquote concert or performance for the grunts, for the upfront folks. This is NCOs, it's not commissioned officers. I'm sure Justin could speak more to it, but that sort of plays into what happens next, that basically not everybody that was on base was actually invited to the party. So an NCO just means non-commissioned officer. It's like, uh, as far as peer groups go, it's like second from the bottom. You know, guys who've been in for a little while, they've been in for like a tour or two. Pretty much if you, in my experience in the Marine Corps, if you hang up and and then if you hang out at an NCO club, you're pretty much a fucking douchebag. (laughs) And I, I was, I was, I was an NCO and then I became a staff NCO with the, just the next, the next tier above. Um, you know, all those get their douchebags. So, so your <laughs> douchebaggery ran, di- ran deep, sergeant and above. Deep. Yeah, you're looking at folks who are kind of in that yeah intermediary. Yeah, and and for anybody listening, keep in mind that this NCO club performance was a big fucking tent on a much larger base in the name. You know, it's I just seriously, that- I seriously thought you were going to turn that to this NCO club performance was. Just a strip club. I thought that was <laughs> something to do with ping pong I thought that's where we were going to go, but that's not the case. And, yeah, I was ready. No, no. I misread. I misread. Yeah, that's a, that's a misread. No, 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 no. It's just it's just like one separate tent where there's a bunch of music pumping out of it, and some people just aren't fucking invited. So it was like seventy five Marines, right? Yeah. So around nine p.m. when Wayne finished a song, she abruptly slumped to the floor and died. The Whoop. fuck? Holy shit! Did did. What a weird turn of events, KY. What's going on? Yeah. So she was shot in the chest. She by a by a by a bullet. (laughs) So so (laughs) it could have been an arrow. (laughs) We don't know. (laughs) Between sorry, no one heard a gun go off. Someone had a what a clearly a blowgun of some kind. Yeah. More to follow, my friend Sean. Great question. So she was shot in the chest, nicking her aorta, and she slumped down and died in the arms of her drummer boyfriend within probably 30 seconds. God. So if anything, truthfully, it, it was pretty quick for Kathy, our young Kathy. Um, and so the reason that I found her is because she was the first female Australian to be killed in Vietnam. Wow. Yeah. That's her so, that's kind of her claim to fame. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. There's so many, I'm, I'm left with so many questions, KY. Like there's so much shit up in the air. Who the fuck shot her? And that's so that is a very interesting story. That that to me is where the story gets even more interesting, even though I will say up front, the details, the specific details are a little shaky, even for me. So the bullet even, was fired. Even for KY, and we all know he I'm is terrible. a he is a professional detective. Yeah, yeah, I'm like it, it, I'm like a professional podcaster, so I like if, know if a lot the details of stuff. are sketchy for him. We don't know anymore. 
He has an <laughs> actual <laughs> magnifying glass. He has yeah, like an it, actual it, it, magnifying glass. <laughs> Uh, so the bullet was fired from a 22 caliber pistol that was equipped with a silencer. Wait, what? I didn't even know you could have a silencer on a 22. So that- why would you need one? They're quite enough as it is. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they had them for tunnel clearing in Vietnam. And they had them for, um, somebody referenced in one of the things I read, for um, prisoner abductions. Fuck. Is of, that right? Of the VC. Apparently. A 22? Are you kidding? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So she was shot by an American service member. She was a shot. She was shot by an American service weapon for sure. So okay. the gun was allegedly fired by U.S. Marine Sergeant James Killen. Which is very, <laughs> very, very, yeah. very Killen, huh? <laughs> yeah. Very apropos last name and very unfortunate last name for him. This is the story. Of, this is the story of the gun. Uh, so the gun was initially claimed to have been stolen from another Marine on the base who was, it wasn't his gun, but, you know, it was assigned to him, Justin, I don't know, but it was assigned to him. He was a, um, he was a tunnel clear and he was on like the abduction teams. It was quote unquote his weapon. And when they say that it was stolen, they use the term hooch. What the fuck is that? What's the, what's the, what's the word? Hooch. Uh, so yeah, hooch is a place that you sleep in. Okay, it's like so a, it's like a tent, like a big tent. Yeah. So basically, this, you know, in all the in all these official records, I was trying to look up, and I, I promise, I was trying to find something more legit than just Wikipedia. This guy on the documentary, who whose gun it was, he was like, "Oh yeah, um, you know, Sergeant Killen comes into my hoop, my hooch, and asks about my gun, asks if he can have it, and I say, sure, you can look at it, and then he leaves." That's kind of what he said. Now, the official reports actually say that Killen came in, was talking to the guy, and was like, hey, do you got that 22? it has got the silencer. And he was like, yeah, it's right there, like under his fucking mattress or something. Definitely. I was, I was, I was just shooting Vietnamese with it a few hours earlier in trenches. Yeah. I, I just put it in the back of somebody's head. Because <laughs> not trenches, tunnels, tunnels. Tunnels, in, tunnels. in the fucking tunnels. tunnels. In the tunnels. Silently so, in the tunnels. Apparently... Killen did go up to the guy and he said, listen, do you got that gun? I want to go, God, I want to laugh, but like, this is so, so ridiculous. He's like, I want to go shoot at these stray dogs that are fucking with me along the fence line. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, not so, not that, it's not, not funny. It's, it's funny. It's I'm funny to hear. It's funny to hear, but you know how many fucking stray dogs we've been shooting in Iraq? I'm sh- a ton, right? Like, a so ton. many confirmed. Probably a ton. <laughs> yeah. I, like, and like, you know, I, I, Obviously, I've never been in war, whatever, but like, I imagine that if your day to day is to be terrified and be horrified by all things that are going on, there's these fucking dogs that are barking constantly at the fence line or that are bothering you in some way. It's like going and shooting a dog that's pissing you off is probably a little bit of stress relief compared to your day to day. It's, it's, that, that is true. And then I'll, I'll tell you from like just an operator perspective, nothing fucks up your night operation like running into a dog. Right. Ah, oh, God, that, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because like, they just they bark their fucking heads off, and there's nothing you can do about it, and like now everyone knows you're there. Yeah. And, everyone and, who wants to kill you knows who exactly where you're at. And if, mm. if anybody, any SBCA people or whatever, firstly, it's the fucking 70s, so those dogs are dead anyway. But the, Or 69, <laughs> sorry. So get the fuck over it. But that being said, they were stray dogs. It wasn't like they were somebody's fucking pet. They were literally running around in fucking Denang and eating garbage and shit. So fucking put all that shit away. It anyway, probably helped him out. Yeah. So the auspices in which he takes the gun is to go shoot these stray dogs. Now, again, he is not invited to the NCO performance. And so is, and, and sorry, and neither is any of the other people that he's currently talking to. There are a bunch of drunk Marines off on the other side of, of the base. No one said how big it was, but the, the inference is that it's a fairly big area. So he goes and gets the gun. And according to him, he had the gun. He shot at the dogs or he went down, didn't find the dogs, whatever. And basically somebody was like, somebody else was like, hey, sweet 22, can I do a couple of fucking desk pops or whatever? And he lends it to somebody, gives somebody else to shoot, gives somebody else to shoot, whatever, right? So it gets passed around. They give it back to the guy. It's back in his hooch. And then fucking 10 minutes later, the whole fucking world storms in and says, who the fuck shot Kathy? And they're like, who the fuck is Kathy? So that's killing the version of it. The version that he gets court-martialed on is that 
they find a shell casing 35 yards away from the tent that somebody popped a shot into the tent during the performance. What they allege is that Killen was trying to shoot his commanding officer, um, I don't have his name, but and missed. So he was trying to shoot his commanding officer, who apparently was widely known this guy was a fucking dick. And I had no problem saying that because everything I read, he was widely disliked. So he was probably a piece of shit. And he missed and he hit the singer. That's that's what they allege in the court martial. Wow. I mean that there's a lot of questions to ask. I mean, certainly in my time I had I had COs or at least platoon commanders that we really disliked and like we did talk about like we could we could get rid of this guy. But you know, we never actually did it. It's just like just talk in the hooch, you know. Hooch talk. But uh yeah, that's kinda crazy. Like if if unless the the CO is near the singer, I don't know how that would be possible. However, I mean, it's like, eh, I don't know. I, that was like a common thing in Vietnam, though, to have, you, you have a lot of guys who were drafted into the war, mm. and they, they get teamed up with a, a commissioned officer who was not drafted, mm. and who and maybe making some poor decisions. And, and, and to their credit, some of these platoon commanders, at least, were young kids fresh out of college, you know, kids who don't know anything and they're leading the Marines to go or in army leading these, these combatants to go fight and kill things and making poor decisions along the way and, and getting other people killed despite what they hear from their NCOs. So it is curious that an NCO is the one who, who fired the bullet. My question is, is how close, I mean, is this guy just that bad of a shot? How close was the CO to the to our girl? Well, I couldn't find any single piece that said how close he actually was. And that's what makes what happens next more interesting. So oh. just to reestablish, she gets shot. Killen's version is that he was out fucking around. Yeah, he, he asked for the gun. No question about that. They passed around to a few people. Everybody on the base was drinking heavily. He admits, said that he was drinking a lot, said that he never purposefully shot any singer. He doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um, the gun passed a few hands, but ended up kind of back where it belonged. They allege that he was so mad at his, at his CO that uh, he tried to shoot him next to her and ended up hitting her. All of it's very fucking shaky. So in the preceding court-martial, Killen is found guilty of unpremeditated murder and sentenced to 20 years hard labor. Oh my God, that's yeah. a fucking that's a long time for yeah. unmeditated murder. Yeah, and Justin, I have to ask. I couldn't find anything. What does hard labor mean? Is that just prison? Is that? Yeah. So so it is prison, and and it's it's confinement with hard labor, and hard labor can can for that time frame can really mean anything. He could be he could be making rocks and little rocks. He could be making things or building things for the war effort it's really hard to say yeah so confinement with hard labor is still actually a legal term that they could potentially charge someone with today as a yeah. okay yeah. okay I mean, the military especially on like the naval side they've got some really weird punishments like <laughs> you can be you can be like sentenced to eating nothing but bread and water like that is a legit to this day enforced Oh my um, God. Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Like really stupid, like old school naval shit. And then Marines, of course, Marine, the Marine Corps falls under the Navy. So they, they're subject to that punishment. Right. And when, like, so everything I was reading said, like the sentence of 20 years of hard labor was everywhere. It wasn't just somebody's opinion or it wasn't somebody's reading of it. It was the actual fucking sentence. And all I thought was he's got, the ball and chain on his foot, and he's making big rocks and a little rocks. That's all I thought. Some fucking cartoon yeah, from yeah. the 50s, right? So, interestingly enough, two years later, back in California, Killen was retried and found not guilty of the crime, released immediately. Wow. So he, he served what? like Crazy. he served like two years and a week, and then retried, and it was over. One of the main reasons cited in the case was that he... It was discovered that the enlisted men who testified against him alter their testimony based on some sort of, you know, give and take of 
you know, hey, you'll get immunity if you testify against this guy. Hey, you'll get immunity if you test testify against this guy. And the evidence was pretty blatant, right? Like their initial testimony was, or their initial report was, now nah, I didn't see him fucking do it. And it became, yeah, he's the guy who pulled the trigger. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that kind of makes sense. I was actually, I wanted to question that because like in the military, I know even in Vietnam, like your weapon is your weapon. Yeah. And if someone, you are responsible for that. If someone takes it, you are responsible for it someone steals it, you're responsible for it. Like that is your weapon. And, and if they gave these guys immunity, like someone came and took your weapon, Oh, we'll give you immunity. Yeah. He, he like, he just convinced you to, to take, to borrow it for the night, you know, and that drastically that, that puts someone in a situation who would be getting tried for a different crime of losing a weapon or, or giving a weapon away that makes them want to make this guy look more guilty than he, he might be. Not to say that he didn't shoot her. I mean, I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know what transpired then. Right, and that that seems to be the actual only true thread throughout this case is that whatever happened that night, no one is certain who the actual shooter was. The only thing that people kind of know and that Killen admits to is that he went and kind of quote unquote borrowed the guy's gun. The guy admits it. Killen admits it. He's like, yeah, I took it from him. And then, you know, again, he he let other people shoot it. And, and then before they knew it, the fucking whole base is in high alert. And they're like, what the fuck's going on? And they're like, what'd you yeah. do with that gun? So yeah. what they, right. So what they, what they think the most likely scenario is that Killen borrowed the gun. It got passed around the base and that at some point somebody popped a shot towards that tent because it was it had the most lights it had the most noise coming out of it it popped a shot towards the tent and it was the shot of all shots and kathy was in the wrong place right. at the wrong time yeah as much as it as much as it really does suck for kathy just from a legal standpoint so many people had their hands on that gun that night it'd be real hard to actually prove that it was just one person out of them, all of them. Right. That, and that the yeah, everything goes to say that like everybody on base was drinking. It was clearly some sort of, and I'm going to say an ignorant civilian term, some sort of night off, you know, that people were given some sort of leniency to at least get drunk that night. I'm sure that if the NCOs were getting drunk, maybe they were giving beer to the boys on the, on the, who weren't invited and all that other shit. So nobody, it seems like nobody on base was fucking sober. And this whole like 35 yards kind of shot being popped, whatever. I think the reason they actually think that it was that gun that fired it is because no one in the tent confirms that they heard a shot. So they assumed that it was what is the only silenced weapon that might be on this base right now is that fucking 22 caliber handgun. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. So in truth, it could have been somebody even further away i'm sure the caliber kind of gives it away a bit certainly but you know somebody could have had an unsilenced 22 that was just fucking popped a shot and fucking there it is you know so yeah that is that's the most likely scenario is that it was just a very very unfortunate shot but this guy did he spent two years in jail in jail for it and a guy wrote a book and he basically decided he said he spent like a decade writing it and for the first seven years of it he's like no no no, killing's fucking guilty and then the last two or three he was like i don't think he did so yeah I mean, it's hard to take your bias away when you um when you do those investigations like that yeah yeah but that is uh that's kathy wayne's claim to fame um she was the first of three australian women to be killed in vietnam and the other two were welfare workers who died in a plane crash in 1975 was the very end of the Vietnam War. So she's the only one that died of direct fire. Yeah. Yeah. And crazy. Tra yeah. Super tragic that she was shot on stage, that her boyfriend was the drummer and held her as she passed. And and the fact that in in the most likely circumstance, she was the victim of random awful chance and somebody's somebody's yeah. negligence, but not someone's purposeful malice. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I you, you know, but uh, Vietnam, there are, as time has gone on, there are tons and tons and tons of these stories that where, as you said, there is just kind of indirect negligence or whatever it might be of, of kind of random acts that happen because you have a mass of guys who are out there who are, in some cases, they are drafted. They're not volunteers. And 
they're trying to kill time as they're out. Yeah. And uh, um, it's, you know, in that documentary I watched and all the, the articles and stuff I was able to read, you know, all the entertainers, entertainers who went, even though it's, you know, entertainment trafficking and all this other stuff, they all said that just about every single soldier to the man was super, super appreciative that they were there. So oh, yeah. it's not, it's not without consequence that these, these mostly women and some men, but these entertainers, these, these, you know, these artists basically are out there in kind of quote unquote in the shit with these real men. It's that taste of home, you know, they were, they were doing something good and it, it definitely illuminated something for me that I never had to think about, you know. And I don't want to give wrong reference here by any means. The a Vietnam draftee from the U.S. was actually considered a great soldier. They knew they were going to just serve and do their time and be done with it. That's the, that's kind of the real deal, at least from most accounts of officers, that sort of thing that were there. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm always reminded when I when I when I think about the Vietnam War and I think about the Vietnam draftees, I I tend to think of Tim O'Brien's the things they carried, which I know yeah. a lot of us read in high school. Oh, yeah. uh, and, that's a, and and that's as someone who who was in the military, that's a very real account mm. of, of mm. things he, they experienced. And, and my favorite uh, chapter in that novel was about. Him, Tim O'Brien calling himself a coward for because he went to Vietnam. He was a coward because he went, and that and that I thought it was like really powerful because he he didn't have the balls to like ride his boat across the lake and go to go to Canada. He really wanted to. I mean, you have these these young guys who get drafted into a war and they get put in this kind of a really weird situation of ultra violence uh, that they have to kind of live through and. Uh, the thing about a warfare situation is, oddly enough, the thing that grinds against you the most is the sheer fucking boredom between these yeah. combat situations. Yeah. And I think I've I've said that I probably said this to KY on the phone a few times, like over there, when I when I gave you a call a few times, and I like I when I hear this these stories of these guys picking up this twenty two, shooting dogs or firing off into the night or firing off into a tent. It's not that I can relate to the malice, but I can relate to the boredom that comes up in a situation like that. And putting it, being a young man, being a 19 to 20 year old man, you know, 18 to 20 year old man in this situation, and just being able to drink for the first time in a year and letting off a ton of fucking steam that's built up. And unfortunately, it led to the death of this, this young woman who had a, a great life ahead of her. I can kind of relate to that as, as shitty as it sounds. Um, unfortunately, it, it ended up in the the extinguishing of a of a young life who had a lot a lot to offer. Probably, I think that in in the grand realm of things, even if it was the the carelessness and uh, you know woeful ignorance of young men at war, spilling off some steam, I think that in truth, anyone listening to this that that would be a little bit easy to pass judgment. You wouldn't know unless you were there. You wouldn't know yeah. unless you were in Iraq. You wouldn't know unless you were in Vietnam. You wouldn't know unless you're WW1 and WW in Korea and all that stuff. So like, you mm -hmm. won't know unless you're there. And if it is the first time that you got a fucking break in one moment to relax, and somebody hands you a fun looking pistol and you've been shooting fucking guns for the last year straight, you would hold one every day. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to hold a gun. And right. so you pop a shot over at, hey, there's lights on over there. Boom. And it could be, 200 yards away it could be 400 yards away and it is the shot of all shots and it and it very again just like justin said it very unfortunately takes a life but you don't necessarily you're not equating all those consequences in that moment especially when everybody's drinking so i i it, it's it's perspective for sure and it's a crazy story to me that it is that oh she was God. that yeah. she was taken that this guy was initially accused and that over the years and over time, it's sort of been sensed that it wasn't some act of like a soldier trying to get back at some asshole or vice yeah. versa or, or a, was, you know, a, 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 she, was, she was really a product of the culture they had. Yeah. And that's what's very interesting about the story because right. Vietnam, again, notoriously the, the culture of troops that were over there, at least through the, through the, kind of 
from when we had troops 64 to I'd say about 68. And then there was like a time period 71 to when we took troops out where they were just kind of on the ground and they were to Justin's point who has done this sort of thing. They were killing time. It was just your, your boredom. So it's kind of up in the air. It's right. I mean, you, you could have had a guy that, you know, if you pick up a nine mil or a 45 and you shoot it at, at 50, 50 meters, you might not hit a fucking thing. Okay. Cause they're just not designed that way. Right. A 22 behaves a little bit different. 22s are high velocity rounds. Like, well, I mean, if you, if it is a high velocity 22, which it probably is, because that's what probably what they were using, a high velocity 22 will travel a great distance at a very straight line. Um, so, if you have a guy who picks up a pistol and is used to shooting a nine mil, used to shooting a 45, which is pretty common in Vietnam, and and knowing that your bullet's gonna gonna lob at 150 meters at the most, and probably not hit what the fuck you're shooting at. And even if you even if you shot a guy at 150 meters with a 45, it might bounce off of him. So he just like ha, pops it off, not knowing that's a, that it's a 22, not knowing right. what the fuck he does, you know. Right. And then just just interested that it's silence, you know. It's being like, oh, this is like a like, what does it sound like? Boop, and then that's it. That they, that's the yeah. moment, and it's a it's a nothing moment to that soldier. It, it means is no greater consequence than any other moment. Less so. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you take a bunch of young men who they're they're shooting every day at human beings, and they're 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 used to it. They're they're they're, they're, de- they're desensitized. Desensitized. Thank you. They're desensitized to the the action of pulling a trigger at another human being. Right. Yeah. This is their uh, uh, normal. And even even if they weren't aiming at a human being. Yeah. Yeah. If they were if they were aiming at. Because all I can think of, like what I what I kept seeing was that it was probably the brightest and loudest spot on the base. And again, it, it could have been it could have been four hundred meters, like it could have been that far away. Now that would have been probably the greatest extent it would have been away. But to Justin's yeah. point, I think it's like you've got a bunch of people who are using certain types of weapons. You know, if, if the handguns they were using, they were used to being like, dude, this thing's dead at two hundred meters max, 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 and they pop a shot, being like, not a chance. And it again, it is the most unlucky thing that happened to Ryan's point is like, it is a perfect example of what goes on in wartime, right? Like you can't, you can't use civilian metrics to measure that necessarily. Right. You have to, you have to take, you have to take into to to account like what, what the guys are kind of going through, what their mindset is, their time to relax and like break free. And then of course they're still stuck. You can't just break free. You can't just yeah. like turn your mind off of the war. Like there's, you know, all of these guys probably just want to relax. Now I, I don't, I don't condone firing a weapon into a, a tent yeah, by any can. means. Right. Um, that, that was, that was, a, that was a stupid and unbelievably negligent thing to do. And whoever did it should, should be public punished for it to but a reasonable extent. We, we do know the military that, Justin was in was under a different discipline than those who were serving in Vietnam, as right. were those who were serving in World War II. You know, yeah, I, it, I, uh, it's it. They're very different circumstantially on how things work. Yeah, I, I would say in in Ryan, your dad was in the army. I, I the, yeah, yeah. like the the idea in World War II and in and in Korea was kind of a numbers warfare game right uh, and you, you you put enough you put enough troops against another army and if you're big bigger than them odds are you'll beat them right yeah. it didn't really pan out for the russians in world war ii but you know, you kind of get the gist yeah. well warfare now is a small group of highly trained individuals right yeah. that can kill more people than they would throw at them, uh, but not, maybe not not the case in Vietnam. I think Vietnam was kind of the turning point in our understanding of what asymmetric warfare was. Yeah. Vietnam was certainly an asymmetric warfare situation, and there were a lot of guys going in with conventional warfare training, right. running into an asymmetric warfare situation, and they they yeah. they were getting hammered. Yeah, yeah. Guys so in we, we we hadn't adapted to what that was. Yeah, right, and, right. right, very much so. Yeah, so very obviously very unfortunate, a uh, uh, crazy crazy story. Um, one side fact that I have, which is an incredible coincidence, is July 20th, 1969 was the same day that we landed on the moon. What the wow, hell? you're right. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. wow. 
Okay. So it was, it was actually because uh, the Kathy Wayne story was a very, very big story, certainly in Australia, but it made world headlines and it was competing with the landing and walking on the moon. So it, it kind so of, if got, you were in the U S that was clearly the, the preemptive headline. Yeah. Was, yeah it was page two for sure. And so, so she got lost in the weeds on the national headlines in the U.S. for sure. Um, yeah. Not that no one knows her story. I'm sure there are people of a certain age who know the story. But certainly on the world stage, if you, if you Google July 20th, 1969, what happened in the world that day, it's the moon landing. It's the moon landing for the first four pages of Google, you know. So you, you, you're never going to find her in today's age. Well, a good thing that we could highlight her here because it, it seems like, she's a very like aspiring young lady who did not make it for just like the shitty circumstance and, and don't get me wrong i am not trying to defend the the guys that threw a pop shot into her tent no um that's bullshit but i i think that she uh she probably had a lot to offer i wonder if we would be singing kathy wayne songs today had she not died in such i was, a, I was about to ask can we find kathy wayne on uh, our streaming services I know that she is on, she's got two or three fairly original videos, probably taken from her time on Bandstand. But with Bandstands and the, the variety shows at the time, it was mostly covers. She's, she's doing a bit of covers. And she is a talented, you know, pretty young lady. Uh, I think she probably would have gone pretty far and had a nice long career. And she had an, a nice voice. So yeah. she was certainly destined for, for, for kind of big things. I mean, think about how successful she was, even though, yes, and that's kind of why I mentioned some of the things about the entertainment industry and Vietnam is that had the pressure not been there, had some of these kind of yeah. external outpourings and, and, you know, maybe, maybe at the time it was, it was seen as an opportunity, but in fact, you are putting young, non-trained people into warfare situations. I mean, that's, I, I think that was a, a brilliant item to add, man, about the, who is going over and the demographically of, of USO what's over there? Because quite frankly, we, we, a lot of these items, these, these myths about Vietnam are still misunderstood. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things I, I saw a couple of different places was that uh, soldiers in Vietnam, both kind of, of every ilk, I say both black and white, but I mean of every ilk that, um, they would get irritated when certain acts weren't brought to their, yeah. their places. I don't want to say FOBs or FO, yeah, FOBs. They're the, the whatever, because, you know, some of these, some of these um, male groups or mostly male groups who didn't have go-go dancers and it, it basically wasn't sexy ladies, they would get put far, far out because they were cheaper. They didn't yeah. take much, it didn't take much bribe to get them places because they needed to get paid. So it was what it was. But to get honestly young white females who were good looking and dancing and they had a go-go dancer, they were in high demand. So the night that this came around and only came around for the NCOs, people, the other folks on base who weren't invited were fucking pissed and they said as much. Oh, definitely. I feel that as a, as a, as a non-NCO on both my Iraq deployments. <laughs> yeah. Like if you, so. if, if they brought Dallas Cowboy Sheilers and they were like, you're not invited. And it's like, I haven't seen a fucking woman in they, a year. If they told you Kendall Jenner was on her way, on her way, but she can't make it out to your deployment, out to your specific spot, she's going to the main hub. We're taking the main hub. Well, yeah. it'd, it'd be it'd be like par for the course. I think that was like the idea. Yeah. When the Dallas Cowboys dealer showed up. It was like, oh, you mean the fucking Pogues? The Pogues? Yeah. The people other than grunts get to see them? That uh, hierarchy that goes on in the military, you already knew it was going to be these fucking, again, persons other than grunts that are going to be taking this fucking shit. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You know what I like? I, I would have shot her. I would have shot Kendall Jenner right there. In the <laughs> 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 I was actually going to say, to add a tiny bit of levity, I was going to say the guy who claims that he was being shot at and the singer got shot, what a fucking bitch that guy is. I yeah. mean, yeah. to be like, um, well, he was shooting at me, so uh, we should probably put him in jail. I get, like, if that's actually what you think would happen, whatever, fucking caveat, caveat, caveat. But, like, 
the guy's a fucking cunt. He's obviously hated among everybody. And he was like, yeah. um, I didn't think that guy was shooting at me, but he killed this young woman. Like, grow the fuck up, dude. Yeah. yeah. He if, killed if Kathy Wayne. Fuck you. If you're if your Marines hate you so much that they're popping pop shots in your fucking tent, you suck, dude. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You've done something dramatically wrong at this point. Yeah. Yeah. That guy's the real fucking villain here. Like true. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, fuck you. S- fucking CEO, whoever the fuck you are, you got Kathy Wayne killed. <laughs> got That's him. true. Yeah. Fucking punk ass. God, I should have looked up his name. Damn it. He's a bitch. No one He's needs to bitch. know his name. Yeah. We can we can cut this part. I just want to tell you guys because I thought it was super funny and it's super mean. But that guy Cole Joy, who was like her talent agent or whatever, again, by all by all instances, he was like not a piece of shit completely. So in nineteen ninety, so imagine this guy's probably 60, 70 years old? Yeah. 1990, while pruning a neighbor's tree with a chainsaw as a favor, he slipped and fell six six meters onto ah, a... Damn. Yeah, that's a... I thought, sorry, I thought it was six feet. It's six meters. Six times three. Oh, fuck. Okay. That's yeah, really sir, high. Whatever, 18 feet. 18 feet. Yeah. He fell 18 feet onto brick paving below, striking his head and falling into a coma, like, immediately. And... He sustained like back injuries and all this other shit, right? So he's in his sixties or seventies, however old he is. Young men in the fifties, yeah, he'd be fucking old. And he was initially given a poor prognosis and was like, "Dude, like this might kill him, whatever." He recovered completely and started touring again in '98. The guy's still alive. Oh my god, he's like what? ninety. Mark Cohn, we got a Mark Cohn here. It's right. He, he's like ninety years old. I'm pretty sure he did two different entertainment tours in Vietnam. Make that very clear. Two different oh, entertainment tours. They tried to fucking kill me with the chainsaw, but I'm out here just touring again. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's fucking Still Mick Jagger, it. man. Still not, Still not quite it, but close. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, sorry. That was like a weird, like I'm scrolling through this guy's Wikipedia. I saw that and I was like, I have to include this. I, yeah. I, I don't know how I worked this in, but like I got to work it in. Yeah. So fucking Kathy Wayne. Do we have a summation from the J Money? We do have a summation. We had a lot of rabbit holes go down, but I actually took studious notes. Studious notes. Okay. So Kathy Wayne, I don't know when she was born, but she made her way onto <laughs> she she made her way onto whatever the Australian bandstand was named was 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 named. Was opportunity bandstand? Opportunity Knox is what opportunity. her first name. And then she got on the bandstand. Okay. So I started taking notes at, at Australian bandstand. Australian <laughs> bandstand. Very <laughs> studious notes. Yep. Yeah. So I, you wrote so a I've laborious got, tone. I've got, I've got Ryan's bad, bad Australian accent and then Australian bandstand. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Then I, I have her hooking up with this guy, Cold Joy. Cold Joy. Yeah. yeah. I got I got C O L period joy that right yeah Colonel Joy Colonel Joy <laughs> Joy yeah she hooks up with Colonel Joy at the at the at the ripe old age of seventeen she goes to Vietnam okay all right then from there she comes she comes home she joins Sweethearts on Parade and we tried really hard not to make any Pornhub references to that one we failed but we tried we failed we yep. tried yep then she goes back to Vietnam. As she's dating the drummer from Sweet Herbs on Parade, she's doing a performance at the NCO Club. And this is where my notes get really skewed. A performance at the NCO Club I have here, shot in the chest and died. Holy shit, what the fuck's going on? Exclamation point. <laughs> I mean, all accurate. Still accurate. Very, yeah, very true. accurate. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in, in, the, in the pandemonium, um, that happens after her, her shooting. It, it turns out the the Marine Corps, or at least the government as a whole, blames a guy named Sergeant Killian. Killen? Killen, yeah. Killen, Sergeant Killen. Killian's my favorite beer. Sergeant Killen's the guy doing the killing. I get that. There you go. There you go. He borrowed the he borrowed a twenty two caliber silence pistol from some non rate and some hooch somewhere. The gun passes a bunch of hands, maybe gets popped off in the night. He doesn't really know. Anyways, Kathy is shot dead. He's the one that gets blamed for it. He does two years of hard labor until his case gets overturned later on, which rightly so. It kind of makes sense. But the jury's still out. Who shot Kathy in her fucking 
early years where she could be entertaining us maybe even today probably still yeah fuck yeah yeah, yeah. we could be listening to the golden nuggets and kathy wayne yeah, could man. be a big voice from Australia. Australia, mm-hmm. from Australia. Australia. Now, would it be a Vegemite pie that we'd all throw up while eating? Is that what we do? No, yeah. they still make yeah. sweet oh, pies. They Vegemite have non Vegemite pies. I get that. I get that. I get it. I get it. So, Australia, they, they have some really good food. It's the same shit we eat here, but it's but you sans the Vegemite. It's really good. Sans the Vegemite. Yeah. Or it's not like oh. Vegemite spaghetti, is what you're telling me. Yeah, it's it's mainly Vegemite on everything. Yeah, and and Vegemite looks exactly the way you think it would. It's 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 a it's a it's olive a brown crab paste. Sludge. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> God, I love how Sean is speaking as if he's had every Australian dish this whole time. Vegemite, let me tell you, the the consistency of Vegemite is as such. Well, just <laughs> just just to give it flavor, there was a a lady from New Zealand who was working at my company. She had gone back to New Zealand, got a bunch of shit, brought it back here, let everybody have a little bit of everything. Their chocolate is amazing down there, by the way. Uh, Vegemite can blow asshole, though. No one wants that shit. That's <laughs> to, to Sean's credit, to Sean's credit, I didn't even need to hear that. I just believed everything he was saying. <laughs> yeah. He had authority on it, and I just instantly believed what he was saying. So. Just so we're clear, New Zealand and Australia are two different places. They are. Two they different are. Places. They're very close, <laughs> and they both have Vegemite. But other than that, they're very different places. They're very different places. Yeah. I did yeah. have uh, I did have uh, kangaroo pate in uh, Australia, and I will tell you, it was delicious. Dude, I would okay. eat kangaroo. I think we've all had kangaroo because didn't McDonald's serve kangaroo meat yeah, they and they make nuggets for a while? Yeah. They Dude, I, get, out, out get out of here. Is that for real? Yeah, yeah. that's that's Dude. serious business. Yeah. They were importing a lot of their McNuggets were, it was like a mix of kangaroo and help me out guys. Was it like, it was like lamb and a couple other meats, right? Yeah. yeah it, well, was, it was like toss off cuts of everything and they were just coloring it, the flavor or coloring it, the color of chicken oh, and man. the consistency. I yeah. for sure like, have eaten like, kangaroo then. Just so we're clear, McDonald's is the biggest consumer of cow eyes in the world. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Ooh, where? Oh. <laughs> Ooh, what is that in? It's in everything. Is your I've ate lots of, their of their fucking meat patties. from McDonald's. Okay, I'm. Sick. I don't even order a Big Mac anymore. I just order Big Cow Eyes, and they know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Okay. Three Cow Eyes in between three buns. Yeah. Fuck my mouth, pussy, with it. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your Big Cow Eyes, you bitch. And they yeah. Know what I'm Where's your kangaroo meat? Where's your Cow Eyes? And shut up. Shut yeah. up. Shut your fucking mouth. Oh, God. Yeah, we're just gonna let's bring not the forget the back. excellent koala joke that I made earlier. Oh, it God. Was, it was, no, one, no one's going to forget that joke. <laughs> yeah. Please don't, don't haunt like me in my fucking good. nightmares. Please don't act like it wasn't good because just saying koalas was enough to make me fucking erupt. Erupt <laughs> sexually. <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. That's, that's what I would have assumed. Yeah.